Hey everybody, tonight's going to be another uh, impromptu video, I'm working on my gourami tank, I'm doing a treatment for the cyanobacteria, I'm using the ChemiClean, and today is the first 48 hour cycle, or the end of the first 48 hour cycle, so it's done its thing, I've got some dead stuff in there that needs to come out, I'm going to use just a standard siphon in a bucket, and uh, if you've ever seen my videos where I use the siphon and I suck all that green slimy stuff off of the leaves of the plants and stuff, this is going to be similar to that except this should be just sort of clumpy dead stuff. Uh, I've got the camera kind of zoomed in on the upper right hand corner where the bulk of that stuff is. Uh, once I've done that we'll do one bucket out of there and then we'll probably try to do one more bucket. Uh, and we'll look at the left side of the tank where it's got a bunch of growth on the glass on the back and maybe we'll see if we can get some big sheets of that stuff to come off. So. We'll see what we can see from a kind of an odd angle with all the stuff on the floor and all the tanks that are kind of in the middle of uh, being rearranged right now. So we'll try to stay out of the way of the camera as much as possible. I'm not really sure how to do this without being right in front of the camera. I was kind of hoping as soon as I touched it, it would just sort of come off in clumps. Gotta be careful of that rummy over there. Alright, well, like I say, it's not coming off nearly as much as I expected it to, so I'm not even going to bother. Well, I guess we just lost that tiger lily, or the leaf anyway. I'm just going to go ahead and drain five gallons out of here, and then we'll move the camera over. We'll try to do the other side on the back a little bit and see what happens. Dump this bucket out. And of course, whenever I'm in a hurry, I always knock stuff over and haste makes waste, as they say. So let me get you adjusted here. See, that doesn't give us a little bit of a look. I'm going to try to get some of that stuff off of the uh, back glass there. <coughs> so we'll see how well this works out. A little better.
I think we're just going to do uh, another quick 10 gallon water change on this tank and we'll add another batch of the ChemiClean treatment and we'll do two more days and we'll try this again see if we don't get more stuff out of there I got some out but it definitely needs more treatment Let's see whether we can see this or not. It does not look like it. There we go. Chemically clean aquarium treatment. That's what we're getting ready to put in there. It comes in a little container. You will also get a little scoop. One tiny little scoop for every 10 gallons. So I do six for this 55 gallon tank. I know it doesn't actually hold 55 gallons of water because of the displacement of the rocks and the woodwork and everything, but I find that as long as you've got good vigorous oxygenation, having a little bit of extra doesn't hurt, especially when you've got such a thick coating of growth in there. So let me go get the water filling back up. while the tank is filling we can mix up the chemical clean let me get you a better look at the whole tank here That's going to have to be good enough for the time being. I mix it up I just put five or six scoops in a standard old milk jug shake it up for a few minutes until it's good and dissolved and then pour it in and that'll be it find that it mixes up fairly easily. Just a few minutes of shaking it like this will have it mixed up just fine. I don't even remember the last time I did a treatment on this tank for the cyanobacteria. I do get in there occasionally with the siphon and you know manually remove some of it. do I with my hands occasionally uh, but it's been a while since I've gotten in there and actually done a treatment to kill the stuff off I don't have to do this on all my tanks only some of them 
The uh, T-Bar tank used to get it occasionally, but I've got that uh, Pleco in there, I've got snails in there, I've got another rubber lip in there, so just about everything gets devoured in there. Uh, and now keep in mind that the, those fish don't eat this cyanobacteria stuff, but if the tank is clean to begin with, they basically just graze on the surfaces as new stuff grows. So if a little tiny bit of this stuff is mixed in with it, it just gets cleaned away before it ever has a chance to start building up. Uh, you'll notice I have some sucker type fish in this tank, the whiptail catfish, the um, I doubt you can see them or not, but there's a little rubber lip pleco down there. And they don't eat this stuff, you know, it's so thick in there that they won't actually scrape this stuff off, um, you know, the back glass or any of the hardware in the tank. All they will clean is the surfaces that are already fairly clean, and that's because it, it doesn't have that thick growth of stuff that they don't eat, which is the cyanobacteria. So here we go, that's the that's how complicated it is adding the treatment to the tank. So we're just gonna let it keep on filling up for a few minutes until it's topped off and then we're gonna call that done for today's water change. Again we'll give another 48 hours and then we'll get in there and we'll try again. I think, honestly, after 48 hours, we're just gonna do a simple water change, do another treatment, and then we can get in there and try to really do some you know, physical removal and scrape away some of the junk that's in there. So we're just about topped off. I like it where the water is not actually, the line is not actually visible between the black line at the top and the plastic rim and the tank. So now we're good, take that shut off. All right, normally when I'm done a water change, I get in there and I wipe the glass down and get everything looking nice and clean and everything, but I'm not gonna bother because we're gonna be right back in there uh, two days from now. And I will show you another little tip while I've got it right here in front of me. If you can see this right here in my hand, that is a clothespin, just a regular you know, spring-loaded clothespin. And I keep it clamped over the airline where the gap in the wood is notched to go over the clothesline itself. And that little gap keeps the airline open so that when the lid closes, it closes against the wooden clothespin. It gives me enough of closure that I don't really have a gap opened up. And then that little piece of wood actually keeps the lid from sealing the airline because if the lid just closes across this airline, it will pinch it and stop the airflow. So using a little uh, clothespin like that and just clipping it over the airline keeps it open. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and call that good right here. I do have to take the hose in the other room and stick it in the sink, but that'll pretty much be that, and there's no sense in you all sitting around waiting for me to do that. So we're going to call this the end of this video, the end of this water change. I'm going to ask you to subscribe, as always. That way, when I get in here and do some more maintenance in a few more days, you won't miss any of that or anything else I've got coming up. I have been working on my waterfall again, and I'm getting really excited about it. I know it holds water now. Uh, now it's just going to be a matter of actually putting it up and turning it on and starting to fill it out and make it look natural and all that kind of stuff. So look forward to that. All right, everybody. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget this one is my 55-gallon Karami tank, and I will see you real soon on the next one.